New this morning, Albuquerque police are investigating a deadly shooting overnight in the southeast part of town. That is where we start. News 13 Samantha McDonald is live out near the scene with more. Samantha, where are you and what exactly happened down there? Well, Matt, we're still figuring out exactly what happened here just near Broadway and San Jose. Police are still investigating. We could learn more from them later today. So this is this is what we do know. Police APD responded to a call uh, in the 400 block of San Jose Southeast. That's south of Bridge and east of 2nd Street between 1030 and 11 o'clock last night. Police say the caller said his friend had been shot on Bethel Southeast, basically just around the corner near South San Jose Park. The caller was driving his friend to the hospital when he decided to pull over and call 911. The man who was shot was rushed the rest of the way by ambulance, but it was too late and he died. And police were out here investigating just until 4.40 a.m. That's when they cleared the scene. There was even a mobile crime unit. Matt, back to you. All right, thank you for the update, Samantha. We should learn more about this a little bit later today. And as soon as we do, we'll pass it along to you here on News 13 and online at KRQE.com. And new this morning at 532, if you live in the town of Bernalillo and you haven't already stocked up on water, you probably want to get some. In fact, a lot of it tonight at 8 o'clock, your town may be going dry. Here's why. A new water utility line is being installed as part of the New Mexico 550 I-25 job. And because of it, people living east of the Rio Grande Bridge on Highway 550 and all areas south of 550 can expect the water to be turned off at 8 o'clock tonight. Now, it's possible this work can cut off water to 80% of Bernalillo for 9 to 12 hours. The town's leaders urge folks to prepare and to have extra water handy. And we are now getting an up close look at some of the devastating flooding here in New Mexico. The town of Bernardo is small. Just nine families live there, but the effects of the flooding on all of them are devastating. Take a look at this. The roads to Chris Lopez's home are completely flooded. So is his yard and his house now. Mr. Lopez grew up in his home south of Berlin. It was passed down in his family through three generations, and they've never seen something like this. I'm, I, I almost want to cry just looking at it, but look at my adobe walls there. They're, they're falling apart. They're about to break in. About to come up. Mm, hate to see this. Sky News 13 was overhead when the National Guard helped people and their pets get out of Bernardo on Monday. Then yesterday, when the water started receding, they were able to go back in, check on their homes, and do what they can to help their neighbors. Governor Susana Martinez toured Catron County, where it's almost as if the tiny town of Mugione is an island right now. The two roads that lead into Mugione are washed out. And yesterday, a plan for the National Guard to fly in food and water, because that's the only way to get there, was called off because the pilots couldn't find a safe spot to land. There is so much water there. Firefighters plan to hike in instead. In fact, it may be months before one of the roads is back open for public travel. And the amount of water isn't the only problem with all the flooding here in New Mexico. It's what's in the water, too. The New Mexico Environment Department thinks there are more than 2,000 infected water wells all around the state, mostly because of flooded sewers. One of the biggest problems is here in Grants, where water from the San Jose River is spilling onto the streets, and it's where a sewer right there is backed up and causing a big mess. Flood water is, gener is just unsanitary because it's typically commingled with raw sewage, coming from sewers that have been flooded, coming from septic systems that have been inundated. Basically, that sewage making a bad situation worse. The city says it is doing what it can to decontaminate all this flood water, but it's not easy, and the Environment Department is monitoring the situation. And the city of Albuquerque is hoping to have Mariposa Park completely flood free today. The park had been underwater for a few days thanks to the rain and all the flooding. The city says built-in pumps have been working non-stop since the flooding started. That was last week. Countless kids and adults use this park for soccer, baseball, and other sports. Some of those activities got back underway yesterday. Well, the bills are piling up for Albuquerque's public school district thanks to a week of flooding. The district says one of its main buildings at its Montgomery complex at Louisiana and Comanche can no longer be used. It's 57 years old, the wing here, and it has roof damage. It is leaking. APS will build a new wing when it has the money. That's going to take a little bit of time to get, though. Up on the west side at Petroglyph Elementary, APS had to pump out the playground. The damage there could run up to 20000 bucks. And down in the South Valley at Adobe Acres Elementary, mud, mud, and more mud. Crews there have been working to get that cleaned up so the kids have a place to go play. 
All right, 536 now. Folks who live on the west side near the base of the escarpment are getting a hand cleaning up from Albuquerque's Municipal Development Department. People must gather all the sand and silt in their driveways. They can again call 311 to schedule a pickup time. The city will come and clear up all of that debris from them. That's after folks sign a waiver. The pickups continue through next Friday, September 27th. And the Albuquerque Public Schools superintendent now firing back after the city council blocks a controversial project that he was in favor for. APS wants to create a two lane road that would essentially run right next to Jefferson Middle School and right along the backyards of people who live next to the school. The district says it would ease a lot of traffic there and make it safer for kids, parents and everybody walking on streets. On Monday night, city council passed a resolution to block changes to any road connected to Lomas near the middle school until there is a formal meeting with APS, the city and neighbors about the project. Superintendent Winston Brooks is not happy. He says the city council's resolution is all about one thing. You call that politics. It's really sad that, uh, that we're sacrificing kids safety because of uh, a city council election that's coming up. Uh, I think that's what this is all about. Unfortunately, it's about politics. There's a lot of uh, a lot of traffic concerns out here. Some folks who live near the school don't want the road changed, saying it would lower their property value. Well, get this. It's already September, only September, and the flu has already arrived early in New Mexico this year. The State Department of Health announced the first flu case of the season. A 60-year-old man from Bernalillo County got it last year. Remember, the first flu case was reported in November. Health officials are urging people here to get their flu vaccine. Do it as soon as you can. There are two of them this year. One, I think, has uh, blocks four strains of the flu. The other blocks three.